Hey, this is Rob. I'm going to show you how to make a rack and pinion in Fusion 360 and um, and get you to the point where you can actually see it working uh, using motion links. So to start out with, I'm going to uh, just do a, create a totally new design. And um, first thing I'll do is change my units to be centimeters. And I will use for that pinion gear the spur gear add-in. So this tutorial really is just to show you how to create the geometry for the pinion since the spur gear um, add-in actually creates the, 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 the spur gear, the pinion gear. So you can see the kind of information it's looking for, diametral pitch, pressure angle, number of teeth, and gear thickness. So before I create that I'll just um, modify my user parameters and add some of those in there. So diametral pitch that's going to be just eight centimeters. I'll add another one for uh, the number of teeth. I'll call that spur teeth. There are no units and they're going to be 15 teeth. The pressure angle has degrees as its units and that's just going to be 20. And um, thickness was the other thing that I was looking for. So I'll just say that's the gear is going to be one inch thick. So everything there is all that you need to create the gear. Uh, we can get a little more information about it, like uh, the pitch circle, which is this kind of imaginary circle that goes around the gear face, and um, and anywhere where it contacts a tooth is is sort of the the point where gears actually mesh. So this is useful for us in creating the the rest of this geometry. So I'll calculate that here, and the way that we do that is just spur teeth divided by diametral pitch. And you can see it doesn't like this, it's still red, and um, the reason is because we're mixing no units with spur teeth and then uh, centimeters for diametral pitch. So to get around this, um, we can just multiply it times one centimeter, and that kind of puts back in the units that um, this parameter is expecting. So for some reason it adds another times one centimeter at the end. I don't really know why, but it works. So. Um, there's also, you know, once we start talking about the actual uh, rack, there are some things that we need, like backlash. So this will basically be the, this kind of slop or tolerance between the gears. I'll use centimeters and say it's 0.015 centimeters. I just am making that number up. Um, and that's just so that everything doesn't fit perfectly because that's not uh, realistic. So there are a couple other things. This is uh, common terminology between the spur gear and the rack, um, and add, addendum and dedendum. So the addendum is going to mark the top of the gear teeth, and we figure that out by just doing one divided by diametral pitch. So I'll again, add, multiply times one centimeter to get that to work. And then the dedendum is going to be the bottom of the tooth. And so these are measured from the pitch circle. The addendum is kind of... Uh, you can see in the background 0.125 centimeters above the pitch circle. The uh, de dedendum is um, in the other direction, and that formula is 1.25 divided by diametral pitch. Um, let's see, we also need to know how many teeth there are in the rack, so I'll call that rack teeth. There are no units, and I'll just make that 10. Um, oh, and then we need to know the pitch. So the spur gear has a, a, a pitch for the, its teeth, and um, we want to find out basically what the uh, the distance is between teeth on the rack. So that's our pitch, and um, that's going to be in centimeters, and that's just pi divided by diametral pitch. I think that's all we need. There is um, there is a circle that we draw. Uh, while we're figuring out the geometry of the, um, the the rack teeth, and it's maybe useful to just add that here. I'll call it outer circle diam, and th there's a formula to it. So it's 0.5 times pi times the cosine of the pressure angle divided by the diametral pitch. So you'll see where that comes in in a bit. Okay, so I'll uh, use the add-in. This is the uh, spur gear add-in, and I'll just type diametral pitch here, pressure angle here, 
and thickness here, for some reason, it does not like uh, putting in a parameter here. So even though we've got uh, this, this parameter called spur teeth, I'll just have to put in uh, 15 here. And another thing to note is, in fact, even though I'm using parameters in there, this isn't really parametric. If I go back and change one of my parameters, you'll see that it actually doesn't change the uh, the gear, unfortunately. So, well, actually, that one that one shouldn't matter. But um, if I make this 18, you can see that the the gear doesn't actually change. So we're a little limited in that way. Uh, if you really needed that to work out, I think you'd have to draw this spur gear yourself in the same way that I'm showing you how to draw the rack from scratch. So this this component's all set for now and I'll just call this uh, pinion and then I will highlight the root component and create a new component called rack. Okay, so now that you can see that's activated and that means anything I do now is taking place within the rack component as its own timeline and everything is associated with this, including this sketch. That's what I'm going to start off with. So I'll hit Create Sketch, and I'll just create it on this work plane. And um, actually, you know what? I'll undo. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me undo there so I can get rid of that sketch that I just created. There's one other thing I want to do, which is uh, I want to rotate this gear. And the reason for that is because it's it's easier at you know if nothing else it's easier for you to follow around along with the tutorial if on the bottom this kind of six o'clock position this green axis meets up with um, the center the midpoint of this uh, gap between teeth so you can see it's happening here but not at the bottom so I think what I'll do is I'll just rotate that uh, by 90 degrees and you can see now it's it's kind of landing right in the center so you could do that and then uh, go ahead and activate the rack and create that sketch. Okay, I'm going to capture position. Uh, I don't know why it flips over, but I, I want to see it at this angle. And so one of the first things I'll do is just get that imaginary line, that, uh, that um, pitch circle. And the way I'll do that is hit C for a center diameter circle. I'll just draw it out here, and I know what that's going to be. That's pitch circle diam. I'll click on this point and this point and say that they should be coincident. And I'll click on it and hit X and that makes it into a construction line. You can see this is basically the point where one tooth would mesh with another. That's called the pitch, pitch circle. From here, I will uh, create a line, just a horizontal line. I don't really care about the length right now. I'll click on it and make it a uh, construction line by hitting X. I'll click on these two and right click and choose tangent so that they're together. And uh, the next thing I need is, well, I'm going to make a center line here because I think it'll make life easier for me later. So I'll do that, do that now. And I'll click on it and hit X to make it a construction line. And I'll, uh, oops, I will make one more line, which is going to be right at that intersection. And um, it's going to go some distance. I don't really care right now. Uh, I'll hit tab and change this angle to the uh, pressure angle. So there's my 20 degrees. I'll click on that and hit X. So I've got a bunch of construction lines now. So what I need at this point is to have a circle here that is tangent to uh, this this curve of the teeth, and that's how that um, that's how that that diameter gets figured out. Now I can either um, I can either do it that way or I can use uh, the formula. So in theory, this formula right here, outer circle diam, should um, should come up with the same diameter, a diameter that lands right tangent to that um, tooth. But you know, I'm going to remove that and do it this other way. So the way that I'm I'm going to do it is to uh, project some of these um, some of these curves from the uh, spur gear. So I'll hit P for project to include these lines in my current sketch. I'll hit OK. And um, what I'm interested in is really this point where that angle, the pressure angle line there, and this tooth uh, intersect. So I'm going to create a point there, uh, point. It's going to be right at the intersection of those two. You can see there's the coincident constraint there. And um, I'll just hit C to make a uh, center circle and make sure that it's coincident with that point that I just made. 
So um, at this point, I, I will also make this a construction line. And uh, I'll make another circle. I can either offset this or I can make another circle. I suppose I could use offset, but uh, you can't offset a construction line. So I'll hit undo to get rid of that um, change of making it a construction line. And then I'll choose offset. And uh, I'll offset it by negative backlash. OK, I suppose I could now make both of these into construction lines. And um, so there are a couple other things. One is the, you know, I need to know where the top of the tooth is and where the bottom of the tooth is. So I will click on this, uh, this line that's tangent to the, the uh, pitch circle, and I'll make another line. I could, uh, could make it an offset, but again, I, well, let's, let's make it not a construction line and then try using offset. So I'll hit O for offset, and I'll offset this by dedendum, which is the bottom of my tooth. I'll hit OK. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll uh, offset. But this time I want to offset in this direction, so I'll do negative. And this is my addendum. So I'll, I'll turn these all into construction lines. And what you'll see is I have the top of my tooth here and the bottom of my tooth there. And uh, the last thing I need to do is to create a line that represents the actual profile of the tooth. It starts at the dedendum, ends at the addendum. And uh, the important parts here are that it's tangent to this inner circle. And also that it's, um, it's, it's pressure angle degrees from the, uh, this vertical. So I will hit D to dimension it. And pressure angle is, my, is the angle I want. So that's, that's it. That's my tooth. And um, it looks like this isn't coincident with this. So I'll just add that constraint. And the same here. I want to make sure those are actually connected to those lines. What I'll do is just use the line tool to make a couple more uh, lines, which are these, the top of the tooth and the bottom of the tooth. And I'll uh, highlight those um, curves that I just drew. and mirror them about that center line. Uh, let's try that again. So here are my three curves that I'm interested in. And the mirror line is here. So that's it, I've got my tooth and uh, I should be able to just stop sketch and even though I could repeat that uh, to make my complete rack, it's better to do that uh, after it's already been extruded. So I'm going to, uh, still within my rack component, I'm going to click on that profile and extrude it by minus thickness. So it's the same uh, size as my spur gear. And at this point I could uh, create and um, add a rectangular pattern, say that this is the body that I want to pattern, and the direction is this way. I'm going to use spacing, not the extent, uh, and I will say I need rack teeth, number of teeth, and the distance is going to be rack tooth pitch. I'll hit OK, and that's really it. If you look at this, those are spaced apart properly. There are 10 of them. I asked for and um, you know the last detail would be adding a bottom to this you could do that so that it's parametric as you change the number of teeth in the rack it would adjust uh, I'd recommend doing that in maybe the the, uh, the sketch that we just created or you could create a separate sketch um, but I'll, I'll leave that to you also you know we have these as components so it's very easy to start adding joints with uh, an axle, you could create a hole in here, create an axle for it, um, create a slider for this rack. And that's what I've done in this one. So I've created this kind of quick base that has a, a uh, an axle sticking out of it. And um, there's a slider joint here so that this uh, rack can actually move back and forth. And then there's a revolute joint here so that the spur gear rides on that axle, turns on that axle. So 
you should, in theory, be able to turn on contact sets and see that when you turn this uh, spur gear, this, this rack will move back and forth. In practice, it doesn't work. It's just not able to calculate it properly. So instead, what I did was use the motion link. So I'll hit escape here, double click on this motion link, or maybe not edit feature here. So you can see that basically um, for every revolution, complete revolution of the spur gear, uh, the slider should move how far. And that distance is going to be rack tooth pitch times uh, spur teeth. So we can see it move here. And you can see that the teeth line up. Um, that's about it. You know, if you wanted to, you could go into uh, these joints and add limits so that it actually, you know, you saw that it moved, the rack moved when the gear wasn't actually touching it. That's easy to do by just editing the joint limits. But um, for the most part, this works. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.